Aren't they great? <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. That's it, then. That is Perfect. absolutely stunning dress. Thank How beautiful. You. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. You have a very interesting CV. You were born in Iowa, but then from age five on, you were raised in Zimbabwe. Indeed. If you were having to survive a zombie apocalypse, would you rather do it in Iowa <laughs> or in Zimbabwe? That is a good question. You know what? Where I was born was so underpopulated. It was such a tiny town called yep. Grinnell. Yeah. I think that might be my better bet, honestly. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of corn. You know, I could hide in the corn stalks, you know? That's true. Probably fare pretty You'd well there. You probably get into a corn silo. There are no doors or windows. You can get in there. You could guard yourself. That is true. That is yeah. very true. I think I would stick in Grinnell. After, yeah. after having done the show for so many years, do you run through any fantasies like what is the ultimate zombie proof shelter to be in? Because that's how people go have those It's an island, that. right? Yeah, they can't walk on, they underwater. Can't they can't they go can't underwater. They can't get to you. You get Why there, not? you clear it out. Really? And you chill. You figure out how to like sustain yourself through agricultural means. And you know, you. I gotta write this write down. down. I don't know. Man. You never know. You know there's an expert. You got this expert you right know, here. You know, say by the night burrito. Obviously, you'd want one of these too. You would want that sword oh, right yeah, there, looking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you, She's this is pretty. That katana. Did, where'd you get your katana skills? Uh, I had to uh, obtain them, and it's a it's a constant journey, actually. When I got have, the job. Do you ever wish you had one of those just walking around in New York? You know, there are those moments, but you know, you just can't use it legally, unfortunately. You know, yeah. that's the tricky they part. They frown on. They frown on that. that. Yeah. Um, uh, the the thing about the show is that, uh, as, I, as as people have said, and I think you yourself have said, is that it's not really about a zombie apocalypse. It's about the human condition yes. with a backdrop of a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think zombie apocalypses are such popular backdrops now, though? Mm. Like, what do you think that says about the human condition, that the idea that your friends could turn on you at any moment and you have to kill them <laughs> is, like, a popular thing in our culture right now? Well, I mean, you could go really, you know, there's a way you could go on this about, like, the fact that the term zombie and what it means sometimes has to do with societal conditioning. Like, are we zombies sometimes? Are we being conventional in how we respond to things? Are we using our own minds? Or are we being programmed in how we live like the song Fela wrote called Zombie back in the day. And oh God, am I going too far with this? No, but, I mean, no, not I, at all. You're going I'm like, just you're making far me go enough. In. You're making me go in. But like, yeah, I mean, the idea of that, of the, like them seeing people actually lose their consciousness, their minds, but still functioning actually kind of like human beings, I think it's something that parallels how we can function in society at times. And so maybe that is something sparking an idea in people's minds as they watch the show. You are blowing my mind. Am I? You are. You are blowing my mind. That's beautiful. I love it. I it sense to me. There is someone watching right now who just started their senior thesis based on what you just said. <laughs> Well, you're a, a very impressive person. Not only are you a well-respected actor on a very popular show, but you also have two plays running in New York right now. You have Eclipsed on Broadway with our friend Lupita Nyong'o, <laughs> and you have Familiar at Playwrights Horizons. Now, these, uh, how does it feel to have two plays running in New York at the same time? Uh, it's, it's pretty surreal. I mean, I'm pretty overwhelmed. I mean, last night I was in that play. I was in Eclipsed, and Familiar was running three streets away at the same time, and it just, it hit me how special this moment is. When friends come into town and say, oh, we'd love to see something, what should it be? Which one do you <laughs> tell them to go see? I tell them they are both my children, and I need love you them to, equally. Yeah, I love them equally, so please try to see both. Now, this one uh, is actually, this one is uh, about uh, people from Zimbabwe living in the United States, in yes. this case, Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it in any way based upon your experience as a child and your family? It's deeply inspired by my family. I was at a wedding some years ago, and I just, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't not do it. I was like, oh my God, my people, my people, I gotta write about it. Like, I couldn't, I made How do they vow. feel about it, though? Do they see they themselves in the play? Hey, I said that to you two years ago. <laughs> Do they see themselves in here? They haven't seen it yet. Only my sister has seen it. Uh, yeah. My parents and the rest of my family, they'll see it this time around. They, my sister saw it last year at Yale. So it, it, the question is still outstanding as to how they will respond. I'm hoping they will just enjoy the play and, and feel flattered. <laughs> <laughs> that they're yeah. being reflected. Uh -huh. How come my character gets all the laughs? <laughs> right. um, Eclipsed uh, is a play on Broadway right now, which is about um, uh, 
uh, women in Liberia during the Liberian Civil War, mm -hmm. um, uh, during the, the rule of Charles Taylor, right. correct? Mm -hmm. um, a very serious subject. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's an all African-American, like, production, uh, not only the, the cast, but, like, also the, the people mounting the production. That's a very significant thing to do on the Great White Way. Right. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Actual color on the Great White Way. Yes. Uh, the the beauty of this is that it came together as a, a five women are the cast, mm -hmm. and they are all African. Actually, um, one is Haitian, mm -hmm. and the rest are from the continent. And then there is a person African, uh, Z um, Zimbabwean or African, Zimbabwean American uh, playwright, and then there is a South African female director. So that's the unusual thing. They've, there have been plays in the past with all women cast and, and playwrights, mm -hmm. but not with a director as well. So the combination of Liesl Tommy being helming it and mm -hmm. then myself is writing it, that's kind of the thing that's really special about it. Now, when this is eventually made into a Hollywood movie, what <laughs> white man would you like to play the lead? <laughs> you. Me? Yes, look at it. It's a deal. The new plays Eclipse and Familiar are now playing on and off Broadway. Donna Guerrero, everybody.